There was an anonymous story shared on Facebook this week by an ex ICOC member. They, um, the person left the church and at the end of the church, they said they had a huge falling out with their discipling partner or DP and it got really ugly, but it wasn't a normal fight. Remember, this is the ICOC, so the discipling partner had humiliated um, and degraded this person in public in front of other people, which of course is ICOC culture to do so. But that was the reason for the falling out. And after leaving a few months passed and this person shared their experience of trying to reach out again to the discipling partner on, on social media to try and patch things up. Um, they had initially uh, blocked the DP, right? But then they unblocked them and reached out to them to patch things up, like I said, to make amends. They had what they described as a vulnerable conversation or an attempt to apologize to the DP and to basically ask if they could just be friends after the ICOC because this person wasn't coming back to the church and they really valued the relationship and they wanted to just forgive forget and move on and, and continue um, to be friends in this next phase. And the response from the discipling partner was to block this person on every social media channel imaginable. And it was a slap in the face to the person. But to me, it was just another day in the ICOC. It is a slap in the face and my heart hurts for this person because they reached out, they tried to, you know, reconnect. Um, they tried to repair what they seem to have something have been broken. But let me say this, the part about it that really uh, pissed me off was that this person hadn't done anything wrong. The discipling partner was the one who needed to be reaching out and apologizing and asking for forgiveness. The discipling partner is the one that should have been asking could they remain friends even though the person isn't in the church anymore. But it was the reverse. And this person is going to the discipling partner or ICOC member asking for forgiveness, um, telling them they forgive them and, and thinking that somehow they had a real relationship and they found out very quickly that that was not the case in the church. And in, I have to uh, emphasize this because I've said it a million times and I will continue to say it. The people in the ICOC are not your friends. I don't care what you've gone through together. I don't care if you delivered their baby. I don't care if you walked or climbed Mount Everest together. I don't care if you sat up all night or watching movies together. I don't care about how many years you've known each other and how many seasons of life you've gone through. The reality is if you leave the church and decide that you are no longer an ICOC member, they are no longer your friend. They do not care about you. You are not someone that they are going to maintain a relationship with after the church unless they are trying to recruit you back into the church. But if you leave, they are done with you. I know this firsthand. The person that was my best friend that I considered my best friend for 10 years, not 10 months, not 10 weeks, um, not two years, but 10. When I told her that I would, I would no longer be supporting the leadership in the ICOC, the, the evangelist and his wife, that I would be visiting other churches, um, that I was exploring my options spiritually, 
that I had doubts, I had questions about things. I remember her being in the kitchen when I was telling her, I was standing in the kitchen and she was standing by the microwave and I was by the sink. And she, she literally stepped back as if I was going to get hit by lightning. And everything went downhill fast after that to the point where she literally put me out in the street as I was renting a room from her at the time and all because I did not um, believe in the ICOC ideology anymore and I didn't support the leaders so this is the reality that people who you think are your best friends your BFFs your roommates, your mentors, your leaders, your comrades, they are not authentic. These relationships are only formed because you are part of the ICOC or ICC. It is not formed on anything else. That is the basis for your relationship. A lot of these people really don't like you. And I, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but I had to find out the hard way. A lot of them didn't really give a crap about me anyway. They didn't even like me all that much. And and once I sat down and got honest with myself, I couldn't stand them either. A lot of them I would just be acquaintances with. Uh, a big chunk of them I wouldn't even talk to, not even on a casual basis. And this is just being honest. And these are some of these people, the people I spent most of my time with because they were my quote unquote brothers and sisters in Christ. A lot of these people didn't have integrity. They were not good people. They were not kind or, or they were just not the kind of people that were a, a true fit for me. Um, they were not authentic. The relationships can't be authentic in a cult. I will say it again and again and again because a lot of times we leave the church and we're in denial and denial comes in different levels so there's there's really strong denial and then there's these lighter milder forms of denial and one of the areas of denial is relationships we think that we were really close to a particular icoc person and we think the relationship can be salvaged after we leave and we find out that that's not true that our relationship only only exists if we're both in the church and the person will completely act like you don't exist and it hurts it hurts so so bad it's so hard to comprehend on an emotional level on a logical level even how someone who who said they love you that hugs you that you go through all these things in life with how in the world can someone who claims to love God and, and that follows the Bible and all that stuff can completely just cast you and act like you, you don't exist. Because when you leave a cult like the ICOC, and this is where the denial comes in with, with it being a cult, because it's a church cult, a cult church, uh, an organization that's a high demand, high control uh, group, whatever you want to call it, when you leave a group like that, you have to remember that you don't exist if you're outside the group. Everything is centered on the group and on the leaders of the group and their ideology and their mission. So you, when you leave the church, you go dark. I mean, you fade to black, literally. They really, you no longer exist. You no longer exist. They don't care about what happens to you. They're not sitting up at night worried about you. They really just think that you're going to hell. And that's pretty much it. And it's hard to accept, but that's just the truth. And it's a bitter pill to swallow, but you got you got to swallow it if you want to move on to the next phase. Trying to make amends and see what we get tripped up is this whole forgiveness stuff that Christianity has in, ingrained in us that something is wrong with us if we just stop associating with people all together. And I don't have a problem with goodbye at all. You know, it's I'm not saying that I don't have feelings, but 
sometimes you just have to just cut some stuff off and keep it moving, you know, and, and trying to go back and, and do the forgiveness thing just doesn't work. You know, it doesn't work because one, there's nothing to be forgiven. And people who are outside the church, when they know a bit about my story, they, they, they typically ask, have I forgiven the people in the church? Because for Christian people specifically, it's all about forgiveness and everything's about forgiveness. And so that's just problematic to me because there's nothing wrong with finding peace within yourself. And that's what I tell people. I'm like, I had to come to a space where I didn't wish harm on them, that I wish them the best, but I never want to see them again. If they contact me, I will not, I will not communicate with them and they don't have a right or they don't have, they don't have access to me and they will never be allowed access to me. And so we have to draw those boundaries and I've done videos on drawing boundaries after you leave the ICOC or your, your church of choice, depending on what group you were part of. But you have to draw those, those boundaries because you didn't do anything wrong. They were the ones that have spiritually abused and traumatized you. You're psychologically manipulated. You know, that everything's twisted. So you feel like, oh, I have to forgive. I have to do this because I don't want to be bitter. You know, it's always, I don't want to be bitter. So let me go back and try to patch things up. But you know what the real reason for that is? And I feel is the real reason that this person um, in the, in the on, set, on uh, social media who shared their stories, the real reason that they wanted to make amends with their discipling partner is because they were lonely. When you leave the church, it, it kicks in that all your relationships abandon you and your entire world is, is inside of that closed ecosystem of the church. And, and so when you leave, you literally have nobody and you're, you feel so alone. You miss those relationships. And the, the irony is, and this is how you have battered wives syndrome in, in the church because this discipling partner had publicly humiliated this person. And I'm pretty sure that that was not a one-time event that they've been doing that for, for a while. So this was an abusive relationship. And so the very fact that this person felt the need to make up with this person and ask them, could we please remain friends after leaving says that a lot about the church, you know, a lot about spiritual abuse and psychological abuse, that it twisted around and makes you seem like the bad guy and, and that you have to make things right with someone who doesn't deserve to be in your life in the first place, that they're the one that abused you, mistreated you, they don't value you, they don't care about your well-being and what's best for you. So this person really has no place in your life and doesn't deserve any kind of apology or anything. If you need to find peace and come to terms with what happened, I think that you should do that because I've done that. But going to the person, absolutely not. You're just gonna re-traumatize yourself over again. You go, it's bad enough you were treated the way you were treated the first time around when you left the church. But going and trying to remain friends with these people, it, it really is an indication that we're lonely, that we miss any relationship is better than no relationship, pretty much. That even if they're, those friendships are abusive in the church, they're better than no friendships at all. And I think that's the mentality that many of us have, which what keeps us going back for more, or we feel tempted to contact you know, our friends in the church, our discipling partners, our, our evangelists, our sector leaders, whatever, because we feel like we miss them. 
and we miss having people in our lives. We miss that and, and we should because we're human beings and we're social creatures and, and we need connection. But what I implore anyone listening to this to do who has left the church is to, you just got to hang in there because going, you can't go backwards. Trying to rekindle relationships in the church is, is extremely toxic. You don't need that anymore. If you're going to move on to the next season in your life and heal and grow and, and basically live your best life, you're going to have to let go of those old relationships in the church and move forward. And the thing is, there's a saying that says, nature abhors a vacuum, which means there there is no such thing as an empty space where nothing nothing is there. When you remove something, something will fill that space. But if you don't remove it, nothing two things can't occupy the same space at the same time. So I hope I'm not losing anyone, but the point is that if you have a cup sitting on the table or think of it like in your car, right? Or, or if in a car, there's a cup holder in the car. You can't, if you have two cups, only one cup can fit in at a time. If you have a green cup and you want to put a red cup in the cup in the cup holder, you have to take out the green cup so that there will be space to put the red cup. And the same thing with relationships is like we we have to remove those ICOC relationships just like the cup holder so that we can put in real authentic friendships in there. And and I know because that's what I did and and I really met some really authentic people and that's where I met my best friend because I had let go of those old toxic ICOC relationships and and some that were not in the church as well. But over time, you know, I had to start pruning and start looking at, okay, who am I and who do who do I want around me? Who, who is worthy to be in my inner space? Not because I'm so, I think so overly high on myself, but, but if you have self-esteem, you really re- realize you deserve the best. It doesn't mean you're better than anyone else. You know, it doesn't mean you're a narcissist. It just means that you have a healthy sense of self-worth. And... Once you leave the church and you step out of these toxic thought processes, you'll start to grow and realize, wow, I really do deserve better. And then that space will be open for real friends to come in your life. But they can't come if your your life is full of old ICOC people. I mean, why would you want to be friends with them anyway? Because think about it. All you're going to do is talk about the church when you hang out with them. You're just going to always feel judged. The person is always going to go back to report on, on how you're doing to, you know, their discipling partner. And, you you know, so it's not going to be an authentic friendship. It's always going to be to some level. I don't care if they just hang out and, and, and do nothing with you. That everything they do with you is with the intent to eventually get you to study the Bible again and get, you know, reconverted. So that's all I have to say about that. Just hang in there. It's really tough during the transition period, but going back is just not an option. Those relationships are are not for you. They're not in your best interest and, and you deserve better. And eventually, if you just keep moving forward, you continue your healing and internally working on yourself and, you know, and just being authentically you, those people who are a match for you will show up and it'll be sweet. Until next time.